if you are bound to play an instrument, the instrument is gonna call you. And I, I got to, when I was 11, I got to be on a train with someone that was playing and singing a song and I bothered my father uh, who was cool uh, and he, he bought to me a guitar and in in the 60s it was not a, a normal thing you know to, to, to own a guitar it was a fantastic thing and uh, I just got to um, to learn uh, um, first some little classical things and after some um, uh, of course uh, Simon and Garfunkel and Led Zeppelin and uh, and finally I got to listen to an album of Doc Watson and Doc Watson was my main inspiration and that's why I'm here you know I wasn't offered the guitar to begin with it was the violin and my father was very much into music as well and his father played the fiddle so it was kind of encouraged for me to get into traditional music and you know the fiddle was great except I wasn't great at it um, all the time I, I, I craved the guitar I just was desperate to get my hands on the guitar I had your first album when it yeah. came out and when I went for my first date with my future wife she had the album. The, the only two album. copies in Italy. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the reason uh, we started to, to really seriously. Because I, yeah, so there are many boundaries. So I remember being in a car with the, the, the famous Gigi Bresciani in, a, in Italy one of my first trips abroad playing music and, and, and it still is and was then very, very exciting for me, you know, just to, to be in a foreign country because I play the guitar, like what could be better than that? So there, Gigi was playing me some interesting Italian music and he stuck on this album of, of uh, Gambetta. I thought, what is this? This is fantastic. I could hear the American influences, I could hear the, the Italian roots of this music. And it just seemed totally fresh and, and really vibrant. And uh, so I, th I think Gigi called you. We were on driving close to Genoa. So, oh, I give him a call. So, I'm like, oh. <laughs> so uh, we connected uh, kind of tangentially at first. Beppe was writing an article for a magazine and he called me. And then finally we met in Glasgow and played together and thoroughly enjoyed it. And then we met again in Australia, and then we met again in Italy, and, that. and on it goes. And each time the connection deepens, and uh, so it made sense to make an album together. I went deep into some study about some uh, um, intriguing traditional music and great music from Europe, uh, from, from my Mediterranean areas. And um, it's really nice when, uh, uh, when you try with, with the taste and with, uh, with your own um, musical vision uh, to, uh, uh, to melt. Uh, together and to create something uh, new with a, with an artist that comes from a totally uh, different background and this uh, happened with Tony and it's fantastic that we uh, that we worked uh, on this project uh, not trying to be uh, he didn't try to be um, Italian when we played Mediterranean stuff and I didn't try to be uh, exactly a Celtic player and uh, we tried to do something uh, something uh, partially new and, and I, I guess uh, we succeeded and I'm, I'm really excited. There's a mixture of material on the, the record as we just talked about the old and new and Celtic and Mediterranean. There's some pieces that we learned specifically for this record. There are some pieces that we've been playing solo for many years, like the sleeping tune, um, like Ave uh, Maria. The Pepe's Ave Maria, mm -hmm. which um, I think is a very mm -hmm. generous thing to, to bring both of these pieces to a, a, a duo yeah. setting. They um, called for a new yeah, new interpretation. Yes. Both of us are kind of stretching. Like for me playing a song like the, the Fabrizio D'Andre yeah. Walzer, that, that's certainly not in my comfort zone. 
And so the, the, the goal yeah. is to play it in such a way that it doesn't sound the least bit uncomfortable. It doesn't, uh, or it isn't uncomfortable, you know, mm -hmm. you make yourself familiar enough with the, the, the chord changes and the progressions. And the same with Beppe, I think, playing some of the, the Celtic stuff. Mm -hmm. What I like is the idea of uh, rescuing uh, um, incredible melodies that uh, are uh, uh, completely forgotten. Uh, for example, to, to decide the Ligurian bells uh, medley, so a, a mel melody that comes from the old bells players, the traditional bells players, I, I had uh, to, to listen a whole afternoon of old tapes of bells. <laughs> It is beautiful uh, when you do this kind of project uh, uh, to listen carefully to some melody that is underestimated or is, or is uh, um, in, in some corner that uh, uh, needs to be um, uh, uh, refound and, uh, and, and uh, rearranged. Yeah. And uh, we did this with this song of John Herald. Uh, who was a great bluegrass player, but also a person from the village, a person uh, that uh, was active part of the important uh, movement uh, that tried to, to change the, the world. And uh, there is this passionate uh, song that is called uh, um, Slightly Go Blind, that uh, for some reasons didn't become a, a super hit uh, when, <laughs> when it came out, and it's so beautiful. And sometimes songs have a deep meaning after 40 years that they are written, and, uh, and many people that listen to, to it now, they, they are uh, deeply touched from it. In this album we, uh, we tried to do many round trips, uh, there are round trips between uh, uh, North Europe and South of Europe, yeah. are, but also round trips uh, uh, on the other side of the ocean mm -hmm. um, and uh, round, round trips in time, I would say, uh, between uh, contemporary and traditional. Uh, yes, modernity and traditional music. So. Between Celtic and Mediterranean, yes. between across the Atlantic and Europe. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, I guess all of this. Uh, returns uh, uh, generated some uh, passion, I hope, and uh, so that's why we hope also the people that will listen to the album. I hope so too. <laughs>